Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cycle, and this is Let's Play uh, Train Simulator. As you can see, we are back on the advanced menu screen where I'm looking at the route specifically and therefore sorted by train again. Uh, so we're back on the enhanced screen. Again, you click on the uh, image, whatever route is up at the time, you uh, find the route that you want, and it will give you this screen. Uh, otherwise, your career tab will just look a lot like my standard tab does right now, which is a list of about a couple hundred scenarios that are just sitting there. Actually, more than that, probably closing in on about 500 or so by this point uh, with all the workshop scenarios and such that I've added so uh, probably a lot of scenarios on that tab. Uh, in the meantime we are going to look at the first of our main three scenarios here today and we are looking as you can see at approaching the Alps. This is the latest of the uh, scenarios that I have coming up in the pack. This is the latest of my of the scenarios and by that I mean this scenario took place on July 3rd 2014 so uh, the other scenarios all took place on earlier date. We're gonna go ahead and just get this out of the way because I wanna get these uh, other two cloudy scenarios out of the way. You can see we have a cloudy one here. You can see that early city run is also cloudy in the spring though, whereas this one's in the summer. And then we have our weekend of skiing, which is a nice clear day, uh, but it's snowing. It's a snowy uh, wintry landscape. So I kinda of wanna get one of these two cloudy ones out of the way. I may go to the winter one next, I haven't decided yet. And in that case, I may go to early city run last because it's spring and it's gonna be a much nicer uh, driving conditions. So we may get the uh, slightly more different, we're gonna, uh, nonetheless, we can get the two slightly more difficult ones out of the way, then we have that nice early city run for two difficulty to finish up with. And I'm not, I, I don't mind doing that, that's fine, we can do that. Uh, however we want to do it, we can do that. So this approaching the Alps scenario, uh, the information is that we'll be running an express passenger train down to Murno in the form of a BR-426, Murno. Now if you don't remember where Murno is, uh, the Murno is located uh, pardon me, Murno is located, according to my notes, at 74.9 kilometers into the route. I don't know where we're starting on the route, so we're going to find out as soon as we get in there. Being a 50-minute scenario and knowing that the 35-minute uh, scenario went from uh, from the very north of the route to uh, a little around halfway, I have a feeling we're going to be starting at Munich. So let's get into the scenario. We're going to find out exactly where we're starting here. See you at the scenario. trains it should be busier than this I am disappointed uh, today you will be taking this BR 426 service down to Murnau you are due for an 1132 departure here at Munich you will have some time there to grab lunch before running the return trip later on today which I don't believe is simulating our scenarios weather conditions are looking pretty clear but still take care you know what since this is our first time at Munich we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Munich before we set up the train for departure so let's uh, be open the doors just and then we'll pause the game and we'll take a look at the tr train and at Munich Station. I want to take a look around Munich Station so you can see it uh, for the first time here. Let's take a look as I have a tooltip moving around the screen. It's gone now. So we'll take a look at uh, Munich Station. So I have opened the doors. We're just taking a look at the from the uh, east side of the Munich Station here. So this is the terminus of many a train here. And uh, as you can see, there's another train over there on the left. Similar train, I think, to ours. I think it's the same train, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's the only train in the DLC, so it would have to be, I would imagine, unless they put a Kuju train in here from a from Brewer Sieg or something like that, which they very well could have. We don't know that. So uh, I'd have to look at the information. I just don't want to do that right now. So this is Munich Station. This is the terminus of the uh, Munich to uh, Garmisch route. It's also, I believe, the terminus for other routes in Munich as well, which uh, I'm sure Munich Augsburg goes here because there is a line going off to Augsburg. So this is probably seen in Munich Augsburg as well. Uh, might look a little different. Uh, and there are other, um, I, think I think that's the only other route to Munich I've picked up. I know there's a Munich to Rosenheim. I have not picked up yet, but uh, after seeing how high speed this is I am now, and how the PZB is not as scary as I thought, I'm actually tempted to pick up the uh, Rosenheim route at the next sale. So I will think about that. But in the meantime, and I'm being advised not to by people because they say it's not good, but you know what? German trains go fast and going fast is fun. So I might just ignore them and do that. In any case, this is the terminus. Let's go ahead and take a look at round more of the station here. So we do have a DB101 here, DB uh, BR class 101 here. 
Uh, that is indeed the uh, same train that you would see in Wurusig. In fact, Wurusig came with six trains. So I believe this is a recycled Kuju model from the DB Class 101 or DB VR 101. So uh, that particular train has uh, definitely seen uh, better forms. There is another form of the train available. I think it's Virtual Railroads or something like that who sells that train. Uh, so there is a better form of the train available. You can't substitute it into the official scenarios like this one, but you can clone them. You can put that train into these scenarios that way, and you can try and play the uh, train that way. Now this scenario is the 426, so obviously we're not going to, er, did I say 426? Yeah, it is 426. So this train does use a 426, so we're not going to be substituting into this scenario anyway. We're going to play this one as is. But if you do have the Virtual Roads, uh, Railroads 426, do you have a route like Ruhrsieg? You can also pick up a PZB enhancement to turn that into a PZB route as well. All the route magnets have been placed in that route by a third party, so you can definitely uh, get that fixed as well. And you can then take the uh, Virtual Railroads Class 101 down that route in some scenarios and uh, have a little bit of fun with that. So, you have there's like we know, there's limited, unlimited options to play this game, and that's just one of the many options that do exist. But this is the DBBR 101. Let's see what the other train is over at this other station here. I'm just going to stay with you live as I zip over to that platform. There it is. And looks like another DBBR 101. So there are several trains here. In fact, there's another train back here that was out of sight. So this other train back here was, um, this one is your standard 426. And that's not me, that's a different 426. I'm up there. So this is a different 426. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main concourse of the station. Well, you can see that we have the uh, typical advertising here. Get your T card and, uh, and uh, you know, the um, make sure to pick up your hat gishmak. Your hat gishmak, which I presume is a hot chicken burger, a uh, spicy chicken burger. The, the Munich hat gishmak. It's available today at your Munich train station. And there's a concourse represented in all its uh, uh, bitmap detail that you would get with a route from 2014. Uh, yes, it's not. It is better than obviously anything you might get from 2009 or 2008. That is for sure. But it is still there. Is still limitations in what you can really show off. You can't really have people walking along on the concourse behind because it's not a passenger area. If they were back there, it would have to be treated as a passenger area, and people would pop in and out all the time. It's kind of a shame that you can't you can't leave a door open and show people going in and out of the door and just warping through the door. Like that would be that would have been a cool effect for them to do. But they just kept the people along the platforms, and that's all that they really did. So. Um, I can't fault them for that. So before we get back to our train, one more thing I'm going to show off here, and it's the most important part of any any German route by far, the most important detail. Oktoberfest! Let's get back to our train and let's get going on our journey to uh, Renault. So setting up our train here, we are going to turn on the PZB system. And there it is. You can see the uh, 8 lit on the uh, dashboard. I think that's an A or a B or something like that. We're going to make sure our headlights are on like that. Let's bring up our HUD and that way we know when to leave. Let's take one more look outside. Departing Munich terminal station here. We are not on our reverser, so we'll fix that. And we are on our way to our destination. Our first destination is Munich Pacing, which uh, is seven kilometers down the road here. And we have to make sure we don't exceed our speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour. We also have a yellow signal, a green over yellow signal at the end of the platform. That does limit our speed as we proceed along the uh, exit to this, of the station here. I think go ahead and get up to 30 because we are allowed to do that. And now we are allowed a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit. That's what the green over yellow means. So we are now under a 40 kilometer per hour speed restriction. We're going to be moving into a 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction in a moment. You just saw the six on the ground there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, continue down the line here, wait for that 60 to pass our train, and we are safe to proceed at this time. So proceed we shall. 
I almost turned the brakes back on. Whoops. So our estimated arrival time per... Whoa, let's not speed. Our estimated arrival time per our itinerary is 11.38, as you can see. And as you can see further, we only have seven stops, or six stops today, because we already completed our first task. We only have six stops here today. So this, uh, again, because we're on the uh, S-Bahn route and we're operating a 426 that goes beyond the S-Bahn terminus, we're not stopping at all the S-Bahn stations. This train normally doesn't stop at all the S-Bahn stations. So we don't have to worry about all those S-Bahn stops. Uh, in fact, this uh, stop up ahead and Tutsing, which is the terminus of the S-Bahn route, are the only two stations we stop at along this part of the route. We can now go to 100 kilometers per hour. Let's go ahead and do so. I'll go ahead and hide that itinerary. You saw one of the uh, accesses to uh, ground level there. This is some kind of a station for something, but it's not a station on our route, so we don't stop at this station. I believe it's just some kind of access to the lower level for a station that is at ground level, but I'm not sure why the surface goes up here. Maybe this is normally a route now, but because uh, it shows as a uh, station along the route on the current uh, train map, but it doesn't show on uh, this station, so on this map. so. Maybe it was under construction at the time. I don't know the details. But here's a station here that we're going to be passing by. And this uh, station is not simulated on our route at all. This is a station for something else. It's not one of our stops. If I bring up the... the uh, as we go up to 120, if I bring up the uh, map, you're going to see as we come back here that the station in question is just... It shows as uh, that... <laughs> But we don't actually do anything at that station. Munich pacing really is the first stop for our journeys. Here's another station here. I believe this is Lyam Station. Yeah, this being the Munich area, there's a lot of trains that go through here. That's why there's so many tracks. We just don't use those tracks. So even though they are stations, you can uh, bring a train to this route and simulate something at those stations, but you're probably going to have a limited service because the lines using them probably go in different directions. So you might have a very short 10 kilometer service at most for something like that. Not really that much fun, but you could do a uh, an alternative situation where perhaps you have to... Uh, there's work being done down at Munich so you're going to have a scenario coming out of Liam instead and there's a bus to the Liam station and your service starts there and therefore you get to use the Liam station to go to Munich pacing. So maybe there is some kind of alternate reality that you can set up in a scenario like that. Not a bad idea. You can do something like that if you want to in a scenario. But because the uh, map, the information I was going by for the uh, for my um, notes, didn't mention those stations. I did not include them in my notes, so I don't consider them as important for our details. However, we do have another scenario leaving Munich, so I will try to mention them in that scenario as we leave Munich in that scenario. So we're a little early, so I'm slowing down for that reason because we are a little early. We don't have to come in going too hot. So I'm going to bring ourselves down to 50 right now as we enter the platform. And I'm just a tad over that, but that's fine. When I get to the end of the uh, platform area here, of the uh, shelter... I believe that would be the right place to stop. That four probably, I mean, oh, that's platform four, never mind. That's platform four. So we're going to come to the end of the shelter here, and I believe this is about where we want to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the brakes here. We're going to make our stop right here. I'm going to ease them off so we have a gentle stop for the passengers. Make sure the brakes are on because we almost started moving again. Arrival at Munich pacing.
So I'm rejoining you a little early here. We are looking at our itinerary. 11.38 is our, is our arrival for this station. 11.56 is our departure to our arrival time for the next station, which is Tutsing. We're going to depart pacing now in order to uh, go ahead and head towards Tutsing. So we have an 18 minute journey coming up here. We are about 32 kilometers away from our stop at Tutsing. Settle back, enjoy the drive, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for riding along with Cyclone Train Service today here on the S-Bahn. So our speed limit is 100 kilometers per hour as we leave the station. I'm getting close to that now. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, try to hold at that. Now you notice that the arrival time uh, on the ETA is already showing that we're going to have a tight stop. So I'm going to have to try to maintain our speeds along the way here to make sure that we don't, uh, don't exceed the speed limit, but that we don't get too far away from it either. So this is going to be a little bit of a delicate balance for us until we get into the 160 which is coming up in a moment. Just making sure we don't speed and we can now go ahead and go up to speed at 160. So we are good to proceed at this time. So uh, yeah, now we're just gonna go whatever speed we can go. The Augsburg line, by the way, went off to the right. We are now down to a four-lane highway again. You know, it's a little bit of a leg spike there. That's the danger of playing on high quality, ladies and gentlemen. Something I should explore is whether uh, a suggested change to the Windows paging file might help reduce that lag. I know it helps reduce out of memory errors, which I have not had the displeasure of running into yet, thankfully, as we pass West Cruise Station, Munich West Cruise. So I've not had those out of memory errors yet, but uh, I'm wondering if the same page file adjustments that have been suggested would actually help with the uh, little bit of lag there as well. I'm actually very curious about that. I may have to try that on a later route. I'm not going to do it any, more, any with this route right now. I'm just going to play this out as is, but I may try adjusting it for a future route to see if we have um, better quality of uh, video because of that. And I'm actually wondering if that might be one of the reasons why the video just stutters once in a while, like it did there. So I'm wondering if that's the reason for the video stuttering. Uh, I'm going to experiment with that. We're going to see as time goes on. Um, I'm hoping that I can bring even smoother video than I am now. I am on one of those gaming computers with 24 gigs of RAM. I should not be having video severing like that. So I'm going to see what I can do to improve the uh, quality for you as I continue in my uh, recording career here, so to speak. My ETA appears to be holding steady, so we are doing good for the time being. The next station we're going to pass by should be locked on the station. And shortly down the railroad from this, we have uh, Grafelfing Station. Grafelfing Station, I believe is how you say that. I have to look at that one twice every time. That's one of the harder ones. Or now that I take a closer look, maybe that was Graf. No, this is Grafelfing right here. So if I'm reading my notes correct, Plan Egg Station will be the next station we pass. And then we're going to pass the Plan Egg Oost Junction. If 
you're paying attention in the lower left, you may notice that my ETA is shrinking. So even though I'm not able to get up to the 160 speed limit, I am gaining speed all the same on this stretch of the railway. So we are going to uh, be able to make our stop on time after all, it looks like. This is a good information for us. We're coming up to a 140 kilometer per hour speed restriction. There's the warning board for it. The S-Bahn trains are the only ones that really have to worry about that. Uh, we seem to have a hard time getting up to a 140 on this part of the track. So, whereas we can do it with a downhill, it's a little bit harder on an uphill for us to do it. That would have been, I believe, Plan Egg Station. Or actually, that might be mistaken. No, we're, I'm a station back. That uh, appears to have been, uh, let me see. That was Gotting Station. I'm actually a little bit behind. That was Gotting Station. We also passed uh, Stockdorf Station. And the reason I knew that now is because uh, we are down to a two-lane railway. So the stations come in very quick succession. It's easy to miss a station, so I apologize for getting the order wrong here. Uh, but I am giving you some of the station names as we come out of uh, Munich. So uh, you can watch for those stations on your journeys as you uh, perhaps drive an S-Bahn scenario on these uh, lines. As you could very well drive the S-Bahn to Tutsing and just wrap up the scenario there. So now that I am back on track here, I know the next station is a closed station, Muthal, Oberbay. Wolfall Overbay Station closed in 2004. coming up to a downhill gradient, so we should be able to inch towards our uh, 140 kilometer per hour speed limit at this time, but it's not affecting our timing apparently. We're timed to not be able to get up that hill, so that's good for us. Here's the closed station. And indeed, as I uh, forecast, we are gaining speed on this downhill gradient. We are going to have to lower our speed and coming up there is a 60 speed board ahead. We may have a further res restriction as well so we're going to go ahead and uh, lower our speed just to prepare for the possibility of a further speed restriction. So I'm going to start dropping our speed now. We're about two kilometers out from that board and from that signal that could indicate a lower speed. So we're going to watch for a distance signal right now that's going to give us further directions. I'm going to stay at 100 for the time being. That should suffice for our purposes. And actually, I went back to 110 by accident, so. I did not receive any kind of distance speed notification there on the uh, PZB system, so unless there's one up here, I'm assuming that we are good to go 60 kilometers per hour through this section. This is a Stern, excuse me, this is Sternberg Nord, opened in 2001. We're down to 60 a little bit early, so this might affect our timing at the next stop. have a PZB notification so it looks like we have a possible additional speed restriction at the next signal. I'm going to drop myself a little further 
for the next signal just to be safe. I think we have, I have to go down to 40. I did not see the four on the signal, but usually that means uh, pay attention to a speed limit, that flashing green signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start slowing down for that now, just in case it is indeed a 40. There is an 80 speed board shortly after that, which I presume will affect us. This is Sternberg. You see the four on the other signal on the platform here. So if I zoom ahead to take a look at the signal, there's a flashing green here. It looks like I did not need to go down to 40, so I am actually good for the time being. Yeah, we're, we're safe here, we are safe. So there's nothing for us to worry about here. We can go back to 60. I thought the beep was trying to tell us something, but apparently the beep didn't mean anything. So we're going to get back up to 60 and we're going to try to make our stop on time because uh, we're, we've now lost a little bit of time trying to uh, adjust for something that didn't happen there. So if you play this scenario, make sure to keep in mind you don't need to slow down at that section for this scenario. I'm going to start working my way back up to 80 as quickly as I can, which means going to 100% and then kind of get back down before crossing the speed limit. We're now under a 120 kilometer per hour speed restriction. We are now approximately 10 and uh, three quarter kilometers from our stop at Tutsi. We're now on a 53 meter climb in gradient. Uh, this is going to take us to Possenhofen. I'm easing off on the speed a little bit, on the throttle rather a little bit now, keeping the speed where it is. And I am gaining speed to 118. If it goes up to 119, I'll reduce the throttle. And I need to reduce the throttle so I don't speed. I don't want to hit 120 because I don't have the decimals to work with, so I can't see how close I am to breaking the limit, and it's a little dangerous going driving at the 120 because you could go up and down without realizing it. You could go up to the 121 by accident. So I tend to like to stay a couple kilometers under the limit because I don't have the decimals to work with. It's a little safer. to 119 now so I'm going to drop my throttle again back to 118. I'm just going to kind of finagle it between uh, those points here while we're on this uphill gradient. And back down. Looks like our gradient is actually leveling out a little bit because our system is, uh, our speed is kind of seeing where it was. That station we just passed should have been Possum Hopen. Feldafing will be the next station we see, about two kilometers down the line, so keep an eye out for Feldafing Station. We are still going uphill to uh, get to Feldafing. Feldafing is located 648 meters above sea level, after which we start going on a downhill ascent. We have a 110 coming up, we need to slow down for that. I almost uh, neglected to do that, so thankfully I caught that in time. This is Feldafing Station. 
Masnode, we have a downhill gradient showing after the station now. So we are going to start going down and we have to manage our speed on the opposite side of the going now. We are a little bit under the speed limit right now, so I'm going to go ahead and reapply some speed. Our next uh, station is going to be Tutsing. It is actually not far away now, four kilometers away. So we will need to get ready to stop in a few kilometers. In about three kilometers, we're going to start preparing to stop. Wow! If you just saw the speed there, I cross over to 111 and I was not tagged for speeding. That was uh, very, very risky. You do not want to do that in case you get tagged for speeding. I must have been right at 111.0 and not a hair above. That must have been what happened. Either that or the decimal's round, I don't know, to be honest with you. That's playing with fire right there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove the throttle again because we are getting to 110 again. We are on a downhill gradient, so I'm going to actually cut it back slightly. I said we'll cut it back slightly. Cut it back slightly, thank you. So we have no signal imposed speed limits coming up. It would be alerted if there was. So we are green into the station. We're not going to break yet because we are still at a kilometer and a half out from our stopping point. But you can see that uh, the uh, minor, you can see that the trip through the um, Sternberg area, where I was a little cautious thinking I had to drop the 40, that did have an effect on our timing. So let's see if we can uh, make this stop on time here. I'm concerned we may not be able to, but I'm extending the time before I break just to see if I can do it. And now I absolutely have to break. Breaking is necessary at this time, so we're going to do it now. I'm going to see if I can just break all the way into the station now. That's what I kind of want to do. Now go ahead and increase the brake application. As we pull in the stop at this platform here. And this is about the right stopping place. So that worked out perfectly for me. Doors are open, arrival at Tutsing, platform three. Just on time. Departing Tutsing. Our next stop is 13 and 3 quarters miles down the railway at Wilhelm Oberbay. You may recall from a previous video that this stretch is 110 all the way, barring any signal restrictions for any uh, oncoming trains or anything like that. So, provide, and there's a crane over there in the uh, on the left. Very nice. So we're going to be uh, worrying about. Um, just going 110 all the way unless we see any signals that tell us we have to do something else. Our arrival time at Wilhelm Overbay is expected to be 12.05, or is that 12.05 or 12.06? 12.05, we leave at 12.06. So we're going to cut our throttle back as we're approaching 110 very quickly and already at 109. There is a line that's going to be branching off to the left here. That line, you may recall, is the uh, Unterzamer. I can't say that. I'm not even going to try. But the line does go to uh, Koshel Amsi. Koshel Amsi is uh, available to the left. Unterzamering Junction, I believe, is the name of the junction. And there goes the line to the left, which no one can go down right now. Convenient.
and there it goes off to the left. So we're now on our own here. The 42.4 kilometer marker just passed us. We have 42.6 coming up. And there was the uh, worker that you noticed me honk the horn for. Just to let him know we were in the area. So I believe somewhere in this, actually, yeah, somewhere in this area, we might have just passed a Demondorf station closed in uh, 1984. Let's make sure we don't speed here, shall we? There we go. Oh, it doesn't hurt to drop the speed by a couple kilometers just to make sure you don't break the speed limit. Especially on a downhill when you don't have any throttle applied. Or any brake for that matter. We'll soon be passing the site of Wilshoven Station, also closed in site of Wilshoven Station. You see what I presume is the station building over to the left, to the right rather? It was either that or it was the building up here. That other one might be a private residence. So now there are no other stations in our way until our next uh, destination, which is Wilhelm Oberbay. You may remember this journey from the first scenario. We came uh, from Tutsing to Wilhelm Bay down this exact same route. We're soon going to be joined by a line from, Gel from Geltendorf. Or Geltendorf, however you pronounce that. Clouds are doing some things in the sky apparently. And there is uh, Wilhelm coming up, Wilhelm Overbay coming up. So we know we're going to see that junction soon at this point. And if you are driving this route from memory, seeing that junction tells you that Wilhelm Overbay is coming up. 
So you would want to prepare for the stop at that point. We are doing okay for our time at this point, so I'm not too concerned about our arrival. However, we are cutting it close, so I'm going to come in faster again. That said, we do have a 100 kilometer per hour speed limit right before the station. We also have a 6, which I did not get an alert for on the... Uh, thankfully, I caught that. The distance signal showed a 6, which means that we have to cut to 60 kilometers per hour by the next signal. But the AWS did not go... Or the... Um, not the AWS. The PZV system did not come to life to warn me of that. So these do not always work. I have to go down to a 60 km per hour speed limit, but the warnings do not always work on the PZB. So I'm already down to 60. I'm gonna be good to meet that signal. And uh, fortunately for me, I caught that. So there's our signal and post speed limit. You have to watch for those as you're going. And this is gonna to add to our ETA because I had to slow down. So this is gonna make the stop a little bit more dicey for me. So that 100 is now even more useless. It was already useless, but it's even more useless now because I'm stopping right behind it. At least we know we can leave at that speed. So that's gonna work out in our favor. I can come into the station going 60, so I'm not gonna change my speed until we get into the platform. And then I'll come to a stop. And I can start braking now. I'm going to try to stop at the building up ahead here. That is my uh, goal. Probably should be stopping under the roof, but there are people waiting before there, so I'm just going to stop there. Arrival at Wilhelm Overbay. Leaving Wilhelm Overbay. Our next stop is Hugelfing. We're going to stop a platform one at Hugelfing. We are leaving at a 100 km per hour speed limit, quickly approaching. We're up to 95 already, so I'm going to start cutting the throttle back here. Whoa! And again, I just barely went into the speed limit, went over the speed limit, but I caught it just in time once again. So I guess the uh, number must round. It must round to show 100.6 is 101. So that must be what's happening here. Anyway, we are moving into a uh, 140 speed limit now. And I can go ahead and I can accelerate at will. There is another junction uh, that we just passed. That branch line goes to Shongao, exiting to the right. To Shongao. We are going to be coming up soon on a, another closed station, Poling, closed in 1984. And uh, there is one other closed station further along the route uh, that uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing on this journey. But I will... I think it is after Mermo. So uh, after Mermo is the last closed station. So polling is the last one we're going to see that is no longer in operation. Also closed in We should be coming up soon, I believe, on the old polling station. So as we leave the polling uh, station location, our next stop again is Hugelfing. So we are going to be seeing that station next, I believe. I 
As we pass, I believe that was the 58 kilometer marker. Let me see here, 58.2, yes. So we are more than halfway along our route to, uh, to uh, Garmisch at this time. The mileage, as you see, is measured from Munich. You can see Hugelfing coming up in the distance. I'm going to keep an eye out for a distance signal in case there's a speed restriction. We are angling to be late according to the timer, but given we can't really do anything to get beyond 132, I don't think there's much we can do about that. So I'm going to start preparing to stop here. I'm going to idle the throttle a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and start hitting the brake at this point because we need to start slowing down now to make our stop. And I'm not coming off enough, so I'm going to increase that a little more than I normally would. Fortunately, it's a nice day, so we're not going to get penalized for that uh, heavier brake application. I'm going to actually ease off the brakes now because we are coming in now very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and start slowing down again now. We're going to be stopping before the building because of uh, our brake velocity here. But uh, we also have to get the doors open because we are late. So we're going to get the doors open next to this woman on the phone. Another one walking by here. Arrival at Hugelfing, platform one. Party Hugelfing Platform 1. A couple workers sitting there on the bench. I didn't notice them coming in, but they were too far off. That's why. Our next stop is going to be Upping um, Straplacy, a name that definitely fits a tongue twister, that's for sure. And uh, our speed limit leaving is 140 kilometers per hour. We are quickly approaching a 100 kilometer per hour speed limit, so we're going to take advantage of a, an opportunity to get a little bit of the extra speed, but we are going to have to slow down immediately. So I'm not going to go above 111 here. Let's just go ahead and start slowing it down now. Somebody's sitting there by the railroad track watching trains going by. Very nice touch. Rail fanning certainly is an activity no matter where in the world you're from. So we're now entering the restriction of the 100 mile per hour speed board. You may remember in a previous scenario we had to cut down to 60 in this in the uh, in this stretch. We entered the 140, but we got a 60 immediately, so we couldn't really use the speed. And thankfully, the uh, timings in that scenario were in a more little bit more relaxed, so that we couldn't, uh, so that we weren't marked late, even though we were actually late, because there was nothing we could do about it. So. It's nice when the timings are relaxed like that in this scenario, unlike uh, some, <clears throat> London to Brighton, where uh, you basically have to rush in in a pretty much illegal driving fashion to make it on time. So we're going to be approaching another 140 kilometer speed board. We just passed it in fact, so we are going to go ahead and go up to that speed now. And uh, the day is cloudy as advertised. You can see the nice blue sky off to the uh, right. There's a little bit down below to the left, but it is generally cloudy. So the weather is staying as advertised.
We do have an uphill here, so we're not going to be getting anywhere close to 140 on this uphill. And by the time we get to the uh, top of this gradient, which is a 1 in 47 gradient as we speak, by the time we get to the top of this, we're going to be approaching upping um, South Lassie. Once again, we're going to be cutting this stop awfully close. I'm never a fan of uh, having these stops being this close on the timetable. I would expect normally a timetable would have at least a half minute or so of relaxation to uh, allow in case something happens. I'm gonna go ahead and start breaking now. I actually probably should have started breaking a little further back, but we definitely have to start breaking now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. As the track doubles, we are entering Uping um, Strafelsi. And our speed is gonna come off nicely just in time. So this is actually perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and ease off for a moment. So we can uh, still come in a little above 50 and then we'll come to a stop. So I've gone ahead and applied a heavier brake application. I may not reach the people ahead. Uh, they're walking towards me anyway, so that's fine. Arrival at Ufing Am um, Strafelsee. Leaving Ufing Am Strafelsi. We only have one more destination, and that is our final stop at Murno. We are about uh, five and a half kilometers away from that, so let's make sure we don't speed on the way, and we will be good to go. We are leaving at a speed limit as we leave the station of 110 kilometers per hour. I started easing back on the throttle a little early, so I'm going to go ahead and push it up just a little bit more at this point. And here we go. This should uh, help us nicely. We are at 107, 106 right now. I'm going to try and bounce us up to 108, and then I'm going to try to relax the speed in that area. There's 108. There is a worker in a truck, in a minivan or something off to the left there. We're at 109, so I'm going to ease it back to 108. And basically, we're going to adjust our speed within this range so we don't break the 110 speed limit. find that when playing a career scenario I definitely keep an eye on my speed a lot more than I normally would the rest of the screen because I know that the atomies in these scenarios can be very very tight and if you don't maintain a speed limit near the top you're not going to be on time so I like stair and stairs better because you can have that speeding and not be penalized you're still going to be able to make the stop um, there is scripting where you can be penalized for speeding, and I have seen it in uh, Western Lines of Scotland in the uh, information the manual talks about the scripting there, uh, where you can be you can actually fail a scenario if you end up speeding for too long, too often. So that is a mechanic that does exist in the game under that kind of scripting. You could, I'm sure, write your own script so that if you break the speed limit, you automatically lose. But that is a bit heavy-handed for a lot of the uh, default DTG scenarios. You won't see that in place there. They're just going to set career scoring and penalize you instead. And we are coming up on our stop here at Murno. Quick further comment on the uh, official scenarios. I just had it in my mind and now I've lost it. So we're just going to worry about our stop at this point.
and I hit the brakes a little bit too early there, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a little more speed coming in. We should be on time anyway, so I'm not too concerned. You saw a uh, industrial area joining us on a spur on the left there. That uh, spur, I'm sure, it doesn't really get used nowadays. That used to be a freight spur, I'm pretty sure. The Unterwerk Murno was on that spur. And that shed, I'm sure, is locked nowadays. So we're going to actually make it almost all the way to the end of the platform. We had a little bit further to go. There is a uh, shed there, but we're finished here. We're going to let our customers off. Arrival at Murno, that's the end of the scenario. Let's take a look outside at our train as we wrap up. So that was a very, uh, that was a really nice drive to Murno actually. I kind of hard, had an easier time with this scenario than I did the previous ones. I think it was actually a level three difficulty scenario. So this was not bad. Um, this is a journey along most of the route. There is going to be another journey that takes us to Garmish at the, uh, in one of the other two scenarios. I don't know where that scenario begins. If it's a full length of the route or if it's like a service to Innsbruck or if it's a, um, just a partial route from like Tutsing or something like that. But we'll find out when we get into that scenario. Well done, driver. All stops were made on time. Time to go and grab yourself some lunch before the return trip to Munich. Be back here, ready to depart for 1332. I'm just going to go keep having lunch. Scenario complete. Okay, unbeknownst to me, I actually had a... Uh, Penalty up Wilhelm Overbay. They did uh, delay. They did penalize me for timeliness, which I did not expect, and I did not catch that because I was doing a, a shot leaving the station. So I'm gonna have to come back and I'm gonna have to correct that myself at a later time. So I missed that. Uh, again, the reason for that was because of the delay coming in, uh, having expected I was gonna have a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit earlier on, and it kind of pushed me back on the timetable a little bit. So I did take a 30. Uh, three minute, second lateness penalty there. I will redo that off camera, so I will get my thousand points. I want to make sure I do that correctly. I'm not going to broadcast that run because that was still a pretty good run. The latter half of that run was flawless. I have no reason to uh, be upset with that run despite the penalty. I still got my gold star as well. Plus, I got my 700 point medal for uh, achievement for completing that scenario. So I'm happy with that scenario. We're going to move on to the next scenario. There are two left on our itinerary here. I think I'm going to do weekend of skiing next, and that seems to be the right thing to do because we haven't seen, we haven't had, we have one other winter scenario, then we're going to go back to spring and have a nice easy drive. So I think that's a good way to wrap up on a nice uh, easy drive, and therefore let's get the winter one out of the way next. So next time you uh, join me here for uh, a journey, we're going to be going back to uh, the lovely, lovely period of... Uh, I'm getting the date here, December 3rd, 2013 for this winter skiing scenario. Weekend of skiing, sorry, weekend of skiing. I, was, I misread that. Weekend of skiing. And as you can see, we're going to be taking a journey to Garmisch Park Concursion and trying to do it without impacting the timetable. This could be a service to Innsbruck. We'll see when we get in that scenario next time. So I will see you for that. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed what you saw here today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, those things will help get this uh, content promoted to more people and uh, give more people the opportunity to enjoy this and join our community that uh, we're going to try to build here. Uh, I've been a part of so many wonderful communities over the years. I want to have my own community around this, and I hope you guys uh, want to join me in that uh, venture. So I'm Cycle, and I look forward to seeing you next time for our nice uh, skiing scenario here. In the meantime, not us skiing, the customers, of course, which we don't see. Uh, so in the meantime, have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, your part of the world. I will see you next time for winter uh, or weekend of skiing ahead. A nice winter scenario. See you next time. Bye-bye.